Morning, Reds. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm going to celebrate. Robin, good, would, would you, you join me in a glass? Go ahead. Now, I know that we did shots after the quarterfinal, and I wanted to continue the tradition, but since I've got such a classy gentleman as Mr. Gutman alongside me today, I thought we'd do it with a nice bottle of red. And um, we are actually going to drink this at this time. We are going to drink it. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> OK. You've put away plenty. <laughs> like, in the last 12 hours, you've put away plenty. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. I'm getting accents of uh, Mo Salah. Yeah, yeah. Accents of beauty and um, frighteningly good is what the bottle says. And uh, frighteningly good is exactly what we saw last night. Yeah. Now, just in case you didn't know, I mean, where were you? Liverpool put on a mesmerising performance against Rome in the first leg of the semi-final. 5-2 victory. Now, a lot of people have been focusing on the two more than the five. Get those guys. <laughs> the, the pink, any of you listened to it last night, was pretty lively with uh, Gibbo holding his own. But we're going to concentrate on the five, I was, think. Was, was, was Gibbo making a stand for the negheads? Well, he oh, was a little... Bit, I was with him at half-time. He was a little bit down. But, I mean, I think he, he was... He was serious <laughs> in as much as he thought that we'd let them in when they should have no chance. I know. But, as I say... We don't want to focus on the two. We want to focus on the five and what amazing football we saw, what an atmosphere we gave and what a bloody nose we gave to the elite of European football because, don't get it twisted, Roma may not have the big prestige of Euro, um, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich, but they're in the semi-final of the Champions League, so we can't take them lightly. Thankfully, we didn't take them lightly on the pitch, Rob. And as much as they may well have got a good start out of it, once we got going, there was no stopping us. No, uh, I almost felt we paid them a little bit too much respect early on. Um, they had that game plan. They, they, they took it to us. They were ambitious. I suppose you looked at them early on and go, good on you in a way, but let them, but don't score whatever you do. Like <laughs> I wasn't too nervous because you could see the energy they were, they were expending was massive mm. and they weren't really breaching us. I mean, notwithstanding uh, that, that wild shot from collar off the, the carriage just lets go through his hands. But after, sort of shortly after that moment, we started to get through them at will mm. and you thought oh, something's brewing here. And when it did start, really, really boiling, yes. it was off the charts. I mean, I, I was saying sort of, so in all spirit of hyperbole and getting carried away at 5-0, I said, this might actually be the best performance I've ever seen by Liverpool, ever, in my entire life. Well, let's put it this way, I can't think of one better just right now. Yeah. You, you know, you can pick your forest in 88 or whatever. It's, it was just an, an awesome performance, and to do it at that stage of, the com uh, of, of this competition was beyond belief. And I mean, I, I joke about the unexpected, because we have seen Liverpool do that to teams before. In fact, we've seen them do that consistently in this Champions League run, yep. where one turns to two and three really quickly. The thing I really liked about this game is that we kind of had that spell twice. It's just the first time we only scored one of the three goals. Mm. Because if you look at the two chances Mane missed, and then Salah puts his in. Yeah. And it's that point where the, the tide seems to shift. But then in the second half, we have another blitz where yeah. we do score three times. And at that point, you can look at the Roma players. They really didn't know what to do. They were screaming at their coach. If you look at the game and run a replay, you'll see De Rossi, Nangalan, Strutman. They're all screaming at the coach saying, this isn't working. Tell us to do something else. Let us do something else, please. Yeah. But one of the things that I thought about it, because I watched the game again straight away pretty much on the highlights, just to kind of dissect a little bit. Early on, we played long balls over the top because they give us that yeah. space to run into. But what happens is that they collect the second balls and move forward yeah. and put us under pressure. Now, what happens is... A little, about five minutes after Genie comes onto the pitch, who I thought was superb, by the way. It was unbelievable. We started winning those second balls in midfield, which allowed us to then go again and then start building our attacks. And that was what I thought was the main difference because Roma weren't doing anything different 30 to 45 than they were doing before. It's just it wasn't working anymore. Yeah, we, we stiff, we, I suppose we stiffened our midfield in a way. Mm. Our long balls, I've noticed it a lot in the last couple of months, re rely on pinging one into Firmino and asking him to do something un, un, unrealistically brilliant <laughs> in terms of control. Because he can, though. Because he can. But what, and once he's got that ball under control and he can make his pass, then it's, it's all uphill for us. Mm. But you could see it coming. Some of the passes weren't coming off early on. 
but that but a lot of that was to do with Roma's energy they're closing down the spaces mm -hmm. looking looking at the passing lanes and being ready but they just couldn't sustain it that was the bottom line and we showed admirable patience something that has come into our game over the last um, over the course of the season and I'm so pleased to see it if you think back to other situations where after those 25 minutes and then those couple of missed chances it's not working there's a lot of oh maybe it's not going to be with our night kind of thoughts yeah. people start to panic start taking pot shots from here, there and everywhere. None of that happened. No. Matt Sadio Mane, who missed two big chances, you could tell there was one moment straight after where he had the chance to cut inside and shoot and he did it. He tried to lay it off. Yeah. And I thought, oh, is he going to have one of those games? But no. He got his head round it. The crowd were willing him on. They weren't kind of cursing him out. They were saying, come on, you can do it. Yeah. And he did, and he kept going, and he got his goal in the second half, and I couldn't have been happy for him. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, I mean, down the years, you see a great little performance. It's almost important that you do miss some chances first. You know what I mean? If you take them too soon, I... I I used to notice in, the, you know, in our golden age, in the, in the 80s particularly, is a great performance wouldn't be one where you scored early on. No. Because if you score early on, in a way, it sort of focuses the opposition a bit much and it can become a different kind of game. But our best performances were, I thought, when we scored on 17 or 18 minutes. Mm. Almost, that's, that's the optimal time to score. Yeah. Uh, so you've built up a head of steam. The game's found a pattern. They're, they're, they get into a mode with their friend. By the time Salah scores, Roma are frightened of us. You can see mm. that. I mean, okay, S S um, Sadio Mane misses, but what he, what he does to get into the positions to miss is quite frightening. Yes. And that, that touch and it's... I actually had a little niggle of fear that Sadio had lost a quarter of a yard of pace this season after his, after his, in, after yes. his injury at the end of last season and some, some problems this season. I thought, You've not quite seen many examples of the explosiveness of pace we saw last season. I'm thinking about his goal against Tottenham or the one against Arsenal. Arsenal yeah. Both get both games against Arsenal where he just left people in his wake. That's that's the first time in quite a while where I think we've Sadio, seen Sadio just leave a defence in his mm. wake. And I was encouraged by that, even though he skies the finish. And also what he does on the second chance. I mean, Firmino's great the way he turns, twists the blood of the defender. But he's able to cut it back so sort of potently because of what Sadio does. Mm -hmm. Sadio check, checks to the near post and then doubles back on himself. And the defender's got no idea what's happening. Sadio just forgets to wrap his foot comprehensively around the ball. But it's a great chance and it was really building. We were playing some smart stuff yeah. then. And we felt like you could tell that the players on the pitch knew that it was coming. Yeah. And when it came, oh my days, what a goal from Mohamed Salah. The first one. The, the, one, the thing I like about it is that he had a shot before that, kind of a snapshot almost, mm. where he tries to curl it into the far corner. And uh, Alisson makes it look like a pretty standard save. It was a good save. It was a good shot. It was going in. But he made it look good. So Mo's like, okay, you're having one of those nights, are you? Fine. I'm going to have to put it where you couldn't get it even if you broke your own arm off and threw it at the ball. He, he, uh, I think Gibbo said to me after on the postage stamp. Yes, it was. It, it was the most postage of postage stamps. Yeah, it was. It was a very small limited edition mm. stamp that stuck <laughs> neatly right in the corner at the angle. It was fucking unbelievable. I, I love a shot that goes in off the woodwork. Yeah, It me grazes too. it on the woodwork. Just because of the way it sort of, the sort of ping it goes into, into the net. It's always I'll, the best goal. Watch it on slow motion as well. There's a beautiful angle of the ball arcing it towards the goal and then hitting the bits of the two posts and then just kind of caressing down the net and as the ball kind of rolls down the net you can just see the faces of the Roma fans behind them just like oh <laughs> unlucky <laughs> <laughs> and if that one was good the so I mean where do you stand do you think his first one was better or the second one personally I like the first one better not only because it's the first goal but the second, the touches, he, he's just so second majestic. a joyous goal, isn't it? He runs from inside to out uh, and, and absolutely flummoxes it. Jesus, I think, the defender. It's not as good as, but slightly reminiscent of the goal he scores against Juve for Roma last season, mm -hmm. I think. Is it Juve or Real Madrid? No, I think it's Juve, where he tears from the halfway line. And, and he, he gives himself the angle for a nice finish by... By running at an angle, yes. he makes sure he's not square onto the keeper. The last minute he goes at an angle, 45 degrees to him, and therefore it's a nice little trip mm. over him, or around him, I can't remember exactly where it was, but it's a great finish. Now, I mean, he's putting up messy numbers, there's no arguments about that, and yeah. some people have balked at the comparison. But when That's you see the way. the way he scores his goals, and the thing that the little touches that, that kind of confuse defenders and goalkeepers, they don't know when the shot's coming, because yeah. he can take so many small touches without losing his balance. 
And it's in those elements, apart from standing up in the big games, being the decisive factor. Because, yeah, we were, we were pushing, but we still needed that guy to come and say, look, I've got the quality, I can take us there. Yeah. And going into half-time with that 2-0 lead, it was just the perfect time to score. And I feel like the fact that Roma made a half-time change tells you what they felt about it. Yeah. Now They brought on a big grok, didn't they? <laughs> I just noticed, I thought, they've got, they've got the one lad they could find that was taller than Zeko. They, they literally think West Brom are their, are their role models here. <laughs> that was what it looked like. I thought, you crude bastards. You really think that? And you know what? I'm convinced this is exactly what they'll do in Rome, by the way. Mm-hmm. I think they will look to force set pieces time and time again. You could see early on at Anfield when they got their first corner. Do you notice they had two lads over the corner to try and deceive us whether it would be an outswing or a yeah, inswing? Yeah. You thought, you've just worked on your set piece. This is all week, haven't you? That's how you're going well, to Well, the us. interesting thing would be that they didn't try the tactic that West Brom used against us quite successfully, which is the over-deep ball and then putting it back in from the side. Yes. Because that, that works Missing quite... Missing out Van Dijk. Yeah, 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 that worked quite well. Um, I want to talk a little bit about their two goals because we have to talk about yeah, them. Yeah, sure. They did happen and they had an effect. First one, yes, Lovren makes a mistake. You could argue it's possibly a mistake born out of tiredness rather than anything else. It's a shame, but these kind of things happen. The penalty, I don't think it's a penalty. I think most Liverpool fans don't think it's a penalty, but it's the kind of penalty that I can understand why he gave it. I don't agree with it, but I can under, I can see where, how his mind is working. I've not seen it back, actually. What happens, the ball is hit from the edge of the area, yeah. and Milner doesn't have a lot of time to react. It looks like, instinctively, he's putting his hands towards his balls, but his arm is moving when it hits the ball. Yeah. And in a referee's mind, in European games where they turn to referee a bit tighter, moving his arm towards the ball equals penalty. Now, the fact that these two things happen so close together, and the fact that they happened at the end of the game, has put a dampener on things for some people. I say this, we're still three goals ahead of this team. We are still better than this team. We will still comprehensively be able to score at their grounds. They won't be able to stop us scoring. So for all of that, there is now maybe a 10% chance, whereas there was now a 0% chance. We're still in the box seat here. We've still put in a performance for the ages here. We still deserve to be celebrating here. <laughs> I'm not drinking anymore. I had a skinful last night. <laughs> See, this is it. I didn't drink that much last night, so I'm getting you them all in now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was an awesome performance. We are, I mean, the, the bookies tell the tales of the tape down there. I mean, I think you can get something around 12 to 1 on Roma qualified now. Mm. Like 18 to 1 on. It's, it's ridiculous. I'll tell you what I think is interesting in talking about their, their last two goals because it's now happened. For those who want to see Liverpool as being defensively fragile, it's an encouragement to that narrative. We saw it against West Brom. I was thinking about that just this morning. The times Liverpool have let sides get goals back on them, not always full comebacks, but say in Seville, mm. say against Arsenal at the Emirates, um, Leicester it happens as well, although we ultimately win. Um, yeah, so th- those games in West Brom and this one to some degree. The problem is, is that Liverpool are winning games too quickly at times. The, uh, it's a serious problem, but it's, and I think we have something we have to get used to. Mm. The rhythm of how we win games. I looked at 5-0 and I thought, oh, this is amazing. Well, it's, what's five minutes left? It's like half a fucking hour left, or, yeah. or 25 There was a long left. time left. Thought, what do we do now? Do we go and win 10-0? <laughs> that, that doesn't happen. I mean, what do you, and, I, and I literally, I think mentally, it affects both. But so Klopp does, and Klopp, and quite frankly, even Klopp's confused by it. He's pulling off Salah. You know, a 2-0, if we're 2 nil, he doesn't, he doesn't pull Salah no. off. 2-0 on 70, he doesn't pull Salah off, we probably win 4-0 with a late, a fourth scored in the 88th minute. And what makes it worse is the same thing happened against West Brom. I mean, in the yeah. last two games, he's pulled off Salah twice, we've conceded three goals in those times. Yeah, so I think it's a learning curve for him and for the team. I think we've got to, we've got to get used to our body, if that makes sense. We've yeah. got to get used to the fact that we're very, very good. And we find ourselves at strange points in games. And it's really, really something to be, to be thought about and dealt with. What do you do when you've, what do you do when, when you've got a problem like being 5 nil up on 65 <laughs> minutes? What the fuck do you do? This is why I think having a bigger squad would help. Because you go, I'll tell you what we do. We'll put on the three 50 million pound lads we've just bought in the summer. who have been kicking their heels. Now yeah. let them have some fun. And let's win 8-0. Yes. You know, I'm afraid that's what that's what you do. But the Klopp looked to preserve some legs and it was understandable. Having said I that, mean, I mean it it was and it wasn't understandable. I think 
if Oxlade Chamberlain's injury doesn't happen earlier in the in the game, and that thought isn't on his mind that oh god, I've lost another one, I can't afford to lose another well, one, yes, then he wouldn't true. be quite so um, cautious about bringing him off. But then, if he stays on and he gets an injury, so pulls, pulls up in, in the 85th minute, then obviously everyone will be saying, don't take him off. The fact of the matter is, we've still got him available for the game. We've still got just about 12 guys who can go out and play a game. Against Stoke, I don't know who's going to play. I mean, I'm, I'm actually going into training myself, maybe. I think, <laughs> in all seriousness, I think Stoke is, well, Stoke's a big game in, our, in terms of our league qualification because we can quietly blow this if we don't take Stoke seriously. So I think we must go out and win it. It'll all but put to bed qualification for the Champions League for next season in doing so. And there is a four-day, because of the, the, the Tuesday-Wednesday spread of these games, there's mm. a four-day gap now to Stoke, and then there's a four-day gap to the second leg in Rome. So I think, even think for rhythm's sake, you let them have a go against Stoke. You ho- again, <laughs> you hope to win it in reasonable time and then be able to make changes. Well, well, Stoke aren't the bruisers of old. I mean, they've still got the worst tackler in the history of the Premier League in Charlie Adam. They're fighting for their lives, mind. They are fighting for their lives. But again, I think the fight is a different way. I don't think that they're going to think, oh, well, if we're 2-0 down, we're going to start kicking them because they don't want to be kicked. They might try and take advantage of the fact that we're trying to save ourselves, but again, I see that happening through set pieces. Yeah, yeah. No more than that. But these are all issues right. for another day. Absolutely. Not. I think what's important for all you Liverpool fans out there today... You guys. You guys, and anyone else who's kind of watching this later on, to just remember... We just scored five goals in the European semi-final. Five. That's only been done in the Champions League era once, and that was by the Ajax of 95, who also won 5-2 against Bayern Munich, and they went on to win the trophy. That's what I'm saying. We were talking about, before the game, about where Liverpool stand in the European hierarchy right now, this Liverpool side. We know, we know what but the stand levels of a Bayern, a Barcelona, a Real Madrid are. Mm-hmm. But every now and again you get a team breaking through that looks like it could upset all the favourites. I'm thinking, what was the last time a team like this was on the scene? You know, when it, right, all the only side that came to mind is Dortmund. They were the last side you got. I don't know how good they are, but they're like a force of nature. Yes. They could win everything. Yeah, they could get knocked out, but you, you, they could go to Madrid and win 4-0 or something like that. And no coincidence who the managers are. Yeah, funny you should mention that. The, the 4-1 game where they beat um, Real Madrid and were equally as mesmerising in that game, well, maybe not equally as mesmerising. I remember watching that game, looking at it, thinking, wow, these guys are unbelievable. Five years ago to the day, last, uh, to yesterday, that game was. Oh, really? Yep, five years ago to the day. They were three goals up, even though they conceded a away goal, mm. to a really good team. They went away. They still didn't win that game, but they still got through. So... Again, there's omens everywhere if you look at them. But the most important one is Liverpool 5, Roma 2. Now, Sam's been giving me all kinds of signs. I've gone way over time. We've gone way over time. I'm going to buy my Chelsea tickets. Wait, 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 wait. We haven't even done the papers yet. Let's do the papers, papers first. What time is it? Yeah. Before the ball's kicked, I'd have took Liverpool taking the piss out of AS Roma and making it crystal clear they are by clear, by superiority, crystal clear, the better football team to AS Roma and doing so by three goals. They can stick their Barcelona comeback up their arse. We know what they're capable of. They know what we're, they're, we're capable of. They've come up against the mighty, mighty boys in red today. And for an hour, John Milburn, Liverpool absolutely dominated Roma in a way you've not seen at Anfield in a European Cup semi-final in the whole the whole of your life Neil I was making that point 14 15 times in the first half we were 2 nil in front in a semi-final and I was trying to explain to my younger colleagues and my colleagues of the same age they're the worst John the, the, yeah my, the old me and the older guys are fucking pricks like fucking hell we need more of the younger dickheads really to be honest with you don't really have a clue but I would say that I'm not sure of a time in Liverpool's history where in a European semi-final we've been more than a goal in front. Maybe two, maybe three. Uh, ask Jed Ray. That guy will fucking answer my question. And the internet will tell me I'm a fucking dickhead if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm happy to accept that. But I'm not aware of a time when we've been two, three goals in front. Let alone five. Let alone f- the five we ended up being in a European semi-final. I'm not convinced that's ever happened in Liverpool's history. And I'd be delighted for somebody to correct me. Delighted for somebody to correct me, but that was a performance that was beyond the pale, beyond anything I've experienced as a 44-year-old man 
of this city, born two miles from this fucking ground. I am not convinced that's ever happened before. And I think it's really, really easy to look back to the past. It's really, really easy to reflect back on famous victories in the past. But I, I'm, as I say, I'm not a young man and I'm convinced that's one of the most imperious performances of Liverpool's history. So here we are with the papers, and unsurprisingly, it's more of the same. I just wanted to show you some of the really pretty pictures. I mean, anyone who lives in the Liverpool area, I would advise you to get hold of the Echo today because it's got some absolute gold in there. Poetry. I mean, the puns are off the charts, as always. Um, we were chatting a little bit about the ratings. Everyone's new keeper. <laughs> oh, 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 what have I done? Oh, careful now. We were talking a little bit about the ratings, and uh, it's easy to get lost in those. Uh, lots of people seem to be underrating money and Genie One Alden, because uh, I thought Genie One Alden was fantastic last night. I know I mentioned it a little bit before, but the reason that he was so good is because we weren't expecting to see him on the pitch, and the reason he came on so early is because of the injury to Oxley Chamberlain, mm. which I'm searching for the picture now. It might even be in this one. Of him being stretched off. Yeah, it was it was an awful thing for him. For such a, a lad who's been playing so well, yeah. who's had injury heartbreak before World Cup, the last one. So this would be the second one if he misses the World Cup. And yeah, it's it's kind of taken the gloss off the performance more than the two Roma goals by a long way for me. I, I agree. And uh, Arsenal Sam behind the camera there said to us before we came on, welcome to Oxlade Chamberlain. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that, yeah. <clears throat> when we signed him, the only reservation I really had about the signing and the level of the investment in him is his injury record at Arsenal was just horrific. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think he's missed a day's training though for Liverpool. No, he he's, hasn't. Been, he's been unbelievably fit and it's so cruel on him. So cruel on him to, to, to have it all stripped away from him on the verge of a Champions League final, on the verge of a World Cup. And actually, and, and playing the best football of his, of his oh, youngish he, career. He was playing himself into England's starting team for the World Cup. No, no doubt about that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. No doubt. I'm just looking at the Daily Mirror's ratings here, the fucking idiots. <laughs> a six for the Ox. I mean, even just out of charity, you know, know, so, right? you didn't need that much. You, know, you were so mediocre mm. before you went off. I mean, piss off. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. my gears. Um, but yeah, the, part of the reason why some players have got less than others is that this guy, the guy that they're all talking about, now, normally I'm happy to hear everyone chat amazing yeah, things about Mo, yeah. but... I have to take issue with this one. Rob, who's better? Oh, yeah, and the Palatine who's better? Mo's. Mo out of the Simpsons. Oh, I see what I did He there. doesn't even spell his name the same. <laughs> no, <laughs> all right, Mo. <Mo's. laughs> <laughs> no, in all, in all seriousness, though, I mean, people have said that they're worried about him going back and getting kicked all over the park when he goes to the Olympico, but I don't remember the last time we had a guy where a goal was, it felt like it was automatic. Mm. And having him in the team, it's such a relief to know that we can go there. And even if we're not playing well, even if it's six, uh, 60 and we're 2-0 down mm. and we're fearing it, if we've got him on the pitch, then we don't need to fear. No, no. no most, he's a force of nature. There's, there's, there's a stage in development of, of great players at Liverpool where they just get too good. I almost can't see them. They always come invisible to me. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like they're the one first one on the score sheet. Oh, there's my oh. alarm. I'll just turn that off. Must remind me to buy the Chelsea ticket, so we better crack on it. Yeah. Um, but no, in all seriousness, I think, yeah, it, it is. It is unreasonable what he's doing, and. He, What's incredible is seeing his evolution through the course of a season. He is not the same footballer he was in no. August. He has harnessed his own success. He has built on his own confidence to become a different footballer. We saw it with Luis Suarez, who was fantastic with Liverpool for his first 18 months, I think it was, but then visibly kicked on in that final season. He, he started scoring at a slightly faster rate, and you could see it lift him. And he stopped. He's just stopped missing chances. Mm. I mean, on tenth favour, but most of has more or less stopped missing chances. He's in that same position. We, said, we spent the first eight weeks of the season with him still scoring a goal a game and people go imagine if he took all his chances well he takes all yeah. his chances <laughs> we no longer have to imagine and, and some of them aren't even chances now which is ridiculous he's got he's got every every finish imaginable mm. in fact he's got actually he hasn't got every finish imaginable he's got the one where he, he positions himself on the edge of the box and curls it into the top corner and there's nothing you can do about it no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a crazy. What's, what's fascinating me, just if I can step back from him and, and the, the glory that it represents for Liverpool, is 
What does he do to reprise this? What does even a disappointing season look like for him? You know, at the halfway stage of the season, where he was around the 20 goal mark, he said, well, you know, he won't continue this rate. He might finish the season with 24, 25 goals. And that, that, that would be off the charts. And you go, and maybe next season he won't be quite so productive and he'll get 12. Now you go, if he has a shit season next year, he's getting 25. Yeah. That's gonna be a shit season for Mo. If, I mean, I, I don't know. I, you just hope it's not torn away from us, either through him deciding he has to play for Real Madrid because they're whatever. <laughs> no, 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 let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not. Or more to the point, injury. As we <laughs> said. Well, we, the Oxlade Chamber thing is a, is, a, is a reminder, just on a, on a fine knife edge, our how close, exists. how it could all be taken away. Now, I just want to say one more thing about the second leg. For any of you who are still a little bit nervous, you're you're allowed to be nervous. Don't worry. I just think that you don't need to be nervous, and here's why. Papa Mo's going to tell you. I'm just going to lay a few <laughs> facts out there for you. Number one, Roma are going to play the same way in the second leg as they did in the first leg, which is going to give us the same chances as we had in the first leg. So we've still got the players to go out there and score goals over there. Secondly, people said, oh yeah, they beat Barcelona 3-0. Barcelona didn't think Roma could win that game 3-0. We're not going to be going in there anywhere near as complacent. Barcelona, if you watched how Barcelona played in that game, they believed that they were the only ones who do those kind of European comebacks. Yeah. No. We know what it takes, and we know how, how they can do it, so we're going to be even more prepared. I'd also like to point out the fact of what happened in the City. A City, who are a better attacking team than Roma, yeah. scored straight away yeah. in the second leg, put us under immense pressure, and we held out. And also, going back to all those games you mentioned before earlier in the season where we conceded goals against Roe, against... Um, Chelsea tickets. To the, uh, do, it, do you think? Do you think? No, go on. Uh, we conceded goals against um, Arsenal and against Sevilla and, and West Brom and all those comebacks. We didn't lose any of those games. Yeah. No, no, we didn't. And if we don't lose in Rome, we're through to the Champions League final. Now, what a thing that would be. <laughs> well, we are daring to dream. Now, we have one foot in, in, in Kiev. We've got one foot in Kiev. One foot and an elbow in a... Now, I would quickly want to gloss over the game Better tonight to see who potentially the opponents will be. It's a big game. It's Real Madrid against Bayern Munich. It's quite incestuous because James Rodriguez is on loan from one team to the other, but he's allowed to play. And Zidane's come out here saying, I didn't want him to leave, even though he didn't pick him that much. And so obviously he's going to have a point to prove. Who, who are you picking in this one, Rob? I mean, I mean overall, the overall tie, I want Bayern to get through. You sort of feel Rail, Rail's know-how and pedigree and sense of destiny will see, and, and the refereeing and the <laughs> and sense of destiny and narrative will see Real Madrid through to this final. And then I'm gonna have to, I'll be up nights thinking about Real facing Real Madrid in the final. Um, I want it to be Bayern Munich. I don't see why not. I don't think either of them are that good, quite frankly. I think we can beat them both, don't yeah. get me wrong. I yeah. think on our day, in a final, we can beat both of these teams. I agree with you in as much as I would prefer Bayern to go through, mm. but I, I, I really think we're going to have to wait and see how the first leg goes. Yeah. And enjoy the first leg. I mean, I'm going to tan the rest of this bottle with it. To a Champions League season. To a Champions League season. I like that. Now, there are going to be more shows coming out, as there always is on the Anfield Wrap. Um, but for now, I'm just going to drink this and enjoy the day. And I think you guys should too. Up the Reds. <laughs>